Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop. Today's video is going to be a continuation of our series on Access SQL or SQL. More specifically, today we're going to be talking about subqueries again. And really, what we're going to be talking about with this particular video is how you can help to improve the performance of your subqueries, uh, and as well as the type of subquery that you would see when you're dealing with MySQL uh, and you know Microsoft SQL Server or Oracle or any of those regular you know larger uh, relational database management systems you're going to see this type of subquery in place okay so let's go ahead and hop out and take a look at access now one of the issues that access does have is from time to time there are certain strategies that you will be using that actually cause some performance issues within Access. And in our particular case, what we've done here is we've kind of set ourselves up for a little bit of a problem later on. When this database gets to the point where there are, you know, hundreds of thousands of contacts and hundreds of thousands of customers, say years and years and years down the road, then what will happen is this query contact info query will start to get slower and slower and slower because it's grabbing all of the data from this query and all of the data from this query and then finally doing a third query after it's gathered all that and it stores it all up in the memory and it just starts to really make the whole thing bogged down okay so what you generally find is a slightly different strategy of dealing with subqueries when you know that you're going to be dealing with large extensive amounts of data so essentially what you have to do and it's kind of funny because it's the exact opposite strategy of what we did in the previous video. Instead of trying to make a, make a query here, and then another query here, and then a third query that combines the two and just names uses the names of those other queries, instead what you actually have to do is you do need to go through the process of copying this query and copying this query and pasting it into this query. And that will give you a performance boost. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, there is a shortcut way of doing this that I want to show you. Um, and it, I do it this way as a shortcut to show you because it makes it a lot less taxing to try to figure out where all your data is coming from and how to do it. And step one of that shortcut is what we did in the first video where we created our primary query with our two subqueries. Because if you think about it, now we have the query that we need for the contact phones, we have the query that we need for the addresses, and now we have in the query contact info, we have the structure of the, of the primary query that we ultimately want. All we have to do is figure out the appropriate places to copy and paste this query and this query so that we can put them into this query and give ourselves that performance boost. It's actually very, very simple. It's very easy. I'm kind of going on and on and on about it, but let me just show you how simple this really is. The first thing that you need to do is we need to use aliases. And we need to do kind of what we did with that exists statement when we worked with the where clause and the exists. We're going to put parentheses in our from statement in front of the name of that query. So we're going to do parentheses and then we're going to use the keyword as. And remember that whatever is in these parentheses is being given the name or an alias that we see right here that follows the as statement. Now one tricky thing here just so that you know um, I already have a query contact phones that's been stored in our access database and because of that I can't really alias it a name that already exists that'll confuse access so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little underscore here between the query and contact phones so the alias of whatever goes in here inside of these parentheses is not going to be named the same thing as our query that we've already got up here but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go up here and I'm just gonna copy everything that is in query contact phones I'm just going to go ahead and copy that and now inside of the parentheses here I'm just going to go ahead and paste it okay so I've got my select statement that is this query the query contact phones is now copied and pasted 
inside of the parentheses and we're aliasing what's in the parentheses as query underscore contact phones. Now one thing you just need to be aware of, I see this mistake all the time, I do it myself, I know it's kind of hard to see on the screen, but there is at the end of what we copied a semicolon. We need to go ahead and delete that. The only semicolon that should exist should be at the very, very end of your query. So we need to make sure we don't have any other semicolons. Okay? So I've got now my select statement, my from statement, and my, my whole query that came from query contact phones, and I've got that included as query underscore contact phones. Now, because I renamed this to query underscore contact phones, I need to go up here to my select statement and also in this on statement, and I need to fix the name that I've given it here because I've, I've renamed it. So query underscore contact phones. I'm just going to go ahead and go query underscore contact phones right here, and then I'm going to go up here to our select statement and fix it here in each one of these places query underscore contact phones, query underscore contact phone number, okay, and there, and I think that's the last of it. Okay, so I can go ahead and run this query at this particular point and make sure that I didn't fat finger anything, and sure enough, you can see that that query works just fine. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and go back in here, and I'm going to do the same thing for a customer address report. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. I'm going to go ahead and leave off that semicolon so I don't have to worry about it. I'm just going to copy everything except for that semicolon. I'm going to query contact info. And again, here now in the inner join, if you look here, here's the inner join that is combining the query contact phones to the query customer address report. Okay. And I'm going to replace this query customer address report with our aliased query. Okay, our alias subquery. So now in these parentheses, I'm just going to go and paste that. And since I renamed it with query underscore customer address report, I need to inc I need to add the underscore to each one of those locations. So we're going to go here, add the underscore, go back up to the top to our select statement, add the underscore, add the underscore here, and here. Just a few more. And you could use Notepad and just do a copy and uh, you know find and replace. Uh, I do that all the time. I just use Notepad and just drop it in there. But I think that should do it. All right, so let's go ahead and view it. Make sure that it runs, and sure enough, there we go. So we're doing essentially the same thing, and um, we've got all the data. It, it will run faster, trust me, when you get out to hundreds of thousands of records of contacts and, and customers, this version of the query will run faster. And you can see there's a lot more information here. It looks much more complicated than the one that we finished up in the previous video. But really, this will give you performance issues. So if you are running into performance issues when you're running queries, when you're opening forms, etc., uh, you know, when you're running reports or, or forms and they've got queries behind them that have large amounts of data, this is a strategy you can use to try to make them run a little bit faster. All right. So we've got this really big complicated query here, but notice then if we open this up in the design view, it still looks very much like what we were working on before in the last video. And we can add new tables. We can add like the employees table. Uh, I don't know how I would link these up. I'd, I'd have to think about it a little bit. It's clearly not ID to ID. Um, but you would have um, some way to, to, to still use this in the design view. It still looks very, very similar, even though the code behind it is dramatically different. Okay. If you have any questions about this, I understand this is a very it's this can get really complicated, especially when you start looking at this. People's minds get really blown, like, oh my goodness, this really starts to bit, get cumbersome trying to look at this and understand this. That's why I wanted to show you the shortcut strategy to make it easier so that you don't have to try to go through here and go through the mental exercise of figuring out how to do your select statement and how to do your from statement in order to 
make your queries go faster to do this this type of subquery structure. And again, this is the type of subquery you will find when you're dealing with MySQL, SQL, with SQL Server, with Oracle, etc. You're going to start to see things like this. Just understand that the key thing you're looking for is this these uh, this as alias, and you're going to see that oh, I've got parentheses that surround this. Okay. So hopefully you guys understand that. I'm not going to go on too much further about it. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to drop me a comment below in the bottom of this video, and I will, uh, I'll try to do my best to answer your question. Thank you.